Running out of money in retirement is the number one concern of those heading into retirement. And future taxes on our retirement accounts is a major risk. In this video, I am going to interview the best-selling author of The Power of Zero, David McKnight. Welcome to the Financial Fast Lane. Today, I have a very special guest with me, the best-selling author of The Power of Zero, Mr. David McKnight. David, welcome. Hi, Lane. Thanks for having me. Yes, you bet. So uh, running out of money early in retirement is, is one of the top concerns for retirees or for people who are approaching retirement, thinking about retirement, um, because they have a lot of concern around taxes and future tax rates. So t tell me about the power of zero. What, what is the power of zero and why did you write the book? So uh, I, I'm going to sort of tell a story that takes me back to the very beginning of my career, which is 1997. Back in 1997, um, Bill Clinton stood before the country in the State of the Union. He says, hey, I got great news. The national deficit is simply zero. And that's not, it's not the national debt, this national deficit, meaning basically he'd balance, balance the budget. He had to borrow from Social Security, pull it off. But the point is, we, didn't, we were living within our means. And then uh, within 13 years of that statement, uh, Comptroller General of the federal government, David Walker, stood before Congress and said, look, tax rates have to double. We're going to go broke. We're like this, like the Titanic heading towards an iceberg. And if we don't veer, you know, if we don't, knock ourselves back on course, it's gonna have catastrophic consequences for our nation. And he basically said, tax rates have to double or we're gonna go broke as a country. And so um, in the face of all of this increasing data from third party experts like David Walker, um, like you know, uh, Dr. Larry Kotlikoff is a PhD at a Boston University, foremost expert in the world on what we call fiscal gap accounting. All these experts are basically looking at the fiscal trajectory of our country and they're saying, look, if tax rates don't rise significantly, we, you know, our ship of state will capsize and that has huge repercussions for our country. And so the question becomes in the face of all of this mounting evidence that tax rates are likely to be dramatically higher even 10 years from now, how does a typical American retiree prepare for all of this? And mm -hmm. um, I wrote The Power of Zero as a way, as sort of a manifesto, as it were, as a way of Number one, helping raise the warning cry about the reality that tax rates down the road are going to be higher, but to sort of lay out a roadmap on how Americans can prepare themselves for that. And so the, what is the power of zero? The zero refers to the 0% tax bracket. So in, in my mind, if tax rates are going up, the best tax bracket to be in in retirement is zero. Why? Because if tax rates double two times zero, still zero. So I wrote that book back in 2013. I, I sort of crossed my fingers, threw it out on Amazon, and I think it really struck a chord and, and resonated with, with Americans. And um, so it's this groundswell sort of a revolution. Um, a lot of people out there trying to get to the 0% tax bracket because it's the best way to shield themselves from rising tax rates. Right. So most, most people have been saving for retirement in tax deferred or tax postponed accounts, right? Like 401ks and IRAs. So, so what, are the, what are some solutions now where to actually kind of solve that problem or to mitigate the risk of higher taxes? Well, one of the biggest tools we have in our toolbox is what we call the Roth conversion. So if you have money in either a 401k or, or an IRA, you can shift that money to tax-free uh, by way of that Roth conversion. And um, you will, you know, the cost of, cost of admission to getting into the tax-free bucket is you got to be willing to pay some tax. And so our message has always been, you can either pay the tax now at historically low tax rates, or you can postpone the payment of those taxes till some point much further down the road, you have your choice, you know, but if you want to wring the most efficiency out of your retirement dollars, you should try to mentally go through that calculus and figure out, hey, is my tax rate going to be lower now or in the future? And so the great thing about the Roth conversion is no matter how much money you have, you can, there are no limits on how much you can shift to uh, you know, to the, to the Roth IRA. I always tell people you want to shift it slowly enough that you don't rise into a tax bracket that gives you heartburn, but you want to do it quickly enough that you get all the heavy lifting done before tax rates go up for good. And we know that in 2026, tax rates uh, are slated to return to what they were in 2017. I call this period of low tax rates the, the tax, uh, tax sale of a lifetime. So uh, I really encourage people to take a look at the next four years of historically low tax rates. And if it makes sense 
to start doing some of these shifts to tax-free than take advantage of it while taxes are on sale. Right. Okay. So we know in 2026, the current tax code expires and we, we go back to what it was in 2017. Um, beyond that increase, what's kind of a, I guess, a projection of when taxes might be significantly higher than that? Yeah. So um, Republicans love to um, cut taxes on everybody. Democrats tend to like to um, raise taxes on the wealthy. And so it really depends on who's in power here. Um, I think somewhere along the way, somebody is going to try to extend the tax cuts on the middle class, which are, which are people really in the 22 and 24% tax brackets. I think if you're in those two, two tax brackets, that really is the sweet spot for this type of planning. So um, I personally believe that somewhere along the way before 2026 even ever comes about, you know, whoever's in power is going to extend those tax cuts for another eight years. They can do that under budget reconciliation. You can't make the law permanent unless you get a two thirds majority, but they can extend it for eight years through budget reconciliation. So that's going to push us through 2031 or 2032, which isn't to say that's a that's, you know, which isn't to say that's in the bag. But, you know, you, you should still take advantage of tax rates while they're historically low, because when tax rates go up, there will come a point in our country when when the federal government's gonna to have to raise taxes on everybody or they default on their debt. And so, um, you know, bird in the hand is worth more than two in a bush. So take advantage of these tax rates while they're low. Yeah. Now in your book, you refer to an LARP. So tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so that stands for Life Insurance Retirement Plan. And it's a bucket of money um, that has a death benefit component. And the thing that I, I think is really interesting about it is it, it, it acts and walks and talks and feels like a Roth IRA, but it doesn't have the same limitations as a Roth IRA. You have no contribution limits. There's no income limitations. Um, you can grow your money safely and productively. Uh, so you uh, can link the growth of your money to the upward movement of a stock market index like the S&P 500. But if, you're, if the S&P ever goes down, they simply credit you as zero. So I think this is sort of a safe and productive way to grow at least a portion of your retirement portfolio. But the thing that's really compelling about this is because there's a death benefit component, a lot of the companies that sponsor, sponsor these programs say they will give you your death benefit in advance of your death while you're alive, in essence, for the purpose of paying for long-term care. And, and I think that when people hear about long-term care, long-term care insurance, it sort of gives them heartburn because historically, Long-term care insurance has been something that's very expensive. It's hard to qualify, and it's a use it or lose it proposition. You pay, 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 pay 30 years, and you die peacefully in your sleep, never having needed it. They don't send you your money back at the end. It goes to pay for someone else's long-term care. This is a little bit different because if you die peaceful in your sleep, never having needed long-term care, someone's still getting a death benefit, probably your kids or your grandkids. So there isn't that sensation of having paid for something you hope you never have to use. So it can be something that accomplishes a lot of different things. It can help you, help you grow tax-free wealth. You can take that money out tax-free to combat higher taxes, but it's also got that death benefit that doubles as long-term care. Okay, well, very good. And so now the LARP is not necessarily gonna solve a problem if you've got a lot of money in your 401k, is that right? Right, so um, the, the LIRP is, is a complementary strategy. It's not designed to replace the, the Roth conversion, as it were. If you have a lot of money in your 401k in a rising tax rate environment, I'm going to tell you that there's an, a mathematically ideal amount of money to have in that 401k or your IRA. So get that money shifted out of there. It may make sense to peel a portion of that shift off um, and put it into the LIRP to mitigate a lot of these risks that we've been talking about, but it is certainly not a replacement for the Roth conversion or the Roth IRA or the Roth 401k, all of these strategies should be used in concert with each other uh, because they all have attributes and qualities that set them apart from all of the other tax-free investments. So I really advocate a, a balanced and comprehensive approach to, to tax-free retirement planning. Okay, well, very good. Um, what are some other types, uh, you know, what are some other options to position oneself to truly get in the 0% tax rate? I guess maybe you could tell us what is Zero to you know zero percent tax rate does it really exist? Yeah, yeah. So the zero percent. If you were to look at the IRS, um, you know, tax brackets, you're not going to see zero on there on there anywhere. Zero is just a way of saying 
you're, you're not paying any taxes, you're off the IRS's radar. And, and really the best way to do that, and the IRS, this is, we're, we're not trying to outsmart the IRS. The, there are very clear areas in the IRS tax code that allow for all of this stuff. Um, and what I advocate for is taking advantage of every nook and cranny that the IRS tax code you know, affords us. So for example, I'm a big fan of the Roth 401k because the Roth 401k can give you something that none of the other tax-free streams of income can give you, namely a company match. The, your, your employer is giving you free money and saying, hey, here's some free money to incent you to invest. Why not take that free money? So none of the other tax-free streams of income can do that. I love the Roth IRA. You can't put as much into it as you can the Roth 401k, but it gives you instant liquidity. If you were to need to get that money out, you could get that out whenever you need to. So it can, in, in a sense, work also as an emergency fund. Um, and then I talk about this in the power zero. I love being able to take money out of my IRA tax-free. Now, people are saying, well, how do you do that? You know, donate to the charity. How, you know, how exactly can you pull that off? And basically, if you have the right amount of money, if you have the balance in your IRA is low enough, then the amount that the IRS forces you to take out at age 72 by way of that required minimum distribution can be offset by your standard deduction in retirement. And that's one of my favorite tax-free investments because you put money into that IRA, you got a deduction, it grew tax deferred. And then when you took it out, you took it out tax-free. That's to me, that's like the holy grail of investing. You get a deduction on the front end, it grows tax deferred, you take it out tax-free. So um, and then, of course, you got the, the LIRP. And, and then I talk about something in my book called provisional income, which is the income that the IRS tracks to determine, and you talk about this in your videos, Lane, uh, to determine if they're going to uh, tax your Social Security. And the take money out, it does not cause Social Security taxation. It does not count as provisional income. So if you can keep your provisional income low enough, then your Social Security is tax-free. And if you have six for streams of tax-free income, none of which show up on the IRS's radar, but all of which contribute to you being in the 0% tax bracket, then that's sort of the ideal approach when it comes to mitigating higher tax rates down the road. Okay. Well, uh, very important topic. Taxes are a huge issue. And so I really appreciate you sharing that. Tell me about uh, some of your other books, just kind of, you've, you've written many books and I, I think you have a new one coming out, right? Yep. I've got this one right here called uh, <laughs> Tax-Free Income for Life. And as much as I hate to say it, um, taxes are a huge concern for retirees, but it's not their number one concern. Their number one concern is outliving their money. Right. Um, people don't want to run out of money before they run out of life. And that's um, overwhelmingly in all the surveys they've done, that's the number one, um, that's the number one concern. Um, Harvard did a study where they interviewed people that had a million dollars and they said, do you feel comfortable with how much money you have? And they said, no, we wish we had 2 million. They said, that's interesting. So they went to the people that had 2 million. They said, do you feel like you have enough money? They said, no, we wish we had 4 million. Those that 4 million needed eight, those that had eight needed 15. And finally, when you had $15 million, you sort of felt like you had enough money to sort of outlast, um, you know, to, to, to reach through life expectancy. And so the question is, do you really need $15 million to be able to sleep at night in retirement or is there a better way to do it? And so in this book, I talk about the different ways to mitigate longevity risk or the risk that you're going to outlive your money. I talk about the stock market approach, which basically uh, says that you can never take out more than three or four uh, percent, or you're going to run out of money, you have a high likelihood of running out of money before you run out of life. Uh, and then there's also ways, um, you know, there's companies out there that manage longevity risk much better than we can do it on our own. And they're called insurance companies, and they use um, instruments called annuities where they they pool longevity risk. They pool people's money and the person who lives much longer is going to benefit from the person that lives much shorter. And so um, a lot of people hate annuities, but if you, if you hate annuities or the word annuity, you're also going to help. Um, you're also going to hate the, the company pension that you're planning on receiving, or you're also going to hate social security because all of those instruments operate according to the same risk pooling um, principles. And so annuities, mathematically speaking, can um, mitigate longevity risk much less expensively than if we do it on our own by way of the stock market approach. And so I talk about not only how you can mitigate longevity risk, but I also, I also talk about how you can mitigate tax rate risk within the same financial plan. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I can either mitigate tax rate risk or longevity risk, but I can't mitigate both. There's a way to 
eliminate tax rate risk and longevity risk within the same financial plan. And in my mind, that's what really restores peace to your retirement plan. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, I've read all of your books and I look forward to your future books. You know, when, as, as a financial planner, as we do distribution planning, we run a lot of projections and uh, help people to make sure they don't run out of money during retirement. And when you have a good tax strategy, um, it makes a tremendous difference over time. It's not only the, the, the actual taxes that are safe, but it's the lost opportunity costs on those taxes uh, that really make a big difference, as well as other, other issues around investing in financial, you know, a financial plan. So, well, hey, David, thank you very much. What, uh, what is one piece of advice that you would give to Americans if you could uh, give them one, one uh, word of advice? Well, when, when it comes to rising tax rates, you just don't want to procrastinate. Every year that goes by, I mean, you're on the clock. I mean, every year that goes by where, where you fail to take advantage of historically low tax rates is potentially a year beyond 2026 when you could be forced to pay the highest tax rates you experience in your lifetime. Remember, if you have four years to shift money to tax-free, there's only so much that you can shift and stay within that sweet spot of the 24% tax bracket. If you then, if you procrastinate and you miss a year, then you only have three years. And if you're only shift, have three years within which to shift the money, then you increase the likelihood that you're going to bump up into a tax bracket that gives you heartburn and then two years and then one year. So don't miss a, don't let a single year go by where you're not taking advantage of historically low tax rates. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. And, uh, We'll be in touch. Okay. Thanks yeah. for having me online. Bye. Thank you. You have. Bye bye.